Good morning everybody, it's Graham once again from Unearthed and another episode of Detecting Talk. Tuesdays come around quick. Uh, first off, I would like to say a big hello to Gordon who came to visit me last week. He's a follower on our YouTube channel. Uh, lovely to meet him, a gentleman. Um, and also Robert Wardle who came to buy many MineLab accessories off me early last week. A pleasure to meet the pair of yous. Um, I hope you're out there finding many nice things this next couple of weeks. Um, also to mention about the Loon Valley Open Rally that took place on Sunday just gone. Um, we had the event shelter and the unearthed shop on display on the day and it was heartwarming and a pleasure to meet many nice people. Some of you guys that follow me on here and many of our customers that we've never even met before because you speak to them over the phone or the order online uh, so it was good to put uh, a name to a face, a face to a name whichever way around it is but it was a pleasure to meet many nice people some right characters um, as there is in the detecting world but there were some fantastic uh, individuals that I spoke to at length throughout the day so it was heartwarming to see you guys I didn't know a great deal about the finds that came up. I know there was a couple of Roman brooches and a silver Roman coin that came up uh, later on, but we had to disappear mid-afternoon because we had other things on uh, back at home. But, uh, you know, it was a great uh, event for charity and um, hopefully we'll be able to do some of our own unearth digs. Um, maybe not that big, but uh, certainly for charity in the next years or coming years. So watch this space. Now this episode, folks, is basically around, um, I'm seeing a group, it's difficult for me to put this into words without upsetting anybody, but I'll try my best to do it. I've noticed lately there's more and more people cropping up on social media having a pop at detectorists. So for example, our group our Unearth Facebook group, which is quite a vibrant group of over 7,000 people. It's monitored quite strictly, so we don't let everybody in, um, any rogues uh, and rum individuals are left to join other groups. So we're quite tight um, and picky who we have in. However, I noticed last night to my dismay, some amateur archeologist type gentlemen posting information in our group again it's late on in the night just as people are going to bed admin is slowing down so they probably do it on purpose uh, to sneak it in there uh, unannounced and unseen by us but we were on the ball and we deleted it and why we deleted it was it's because it was some archaeological dig somewhere where the next morning when they came to the dig they found a hole a very neat hole that would be, that had been dug uh, it looked like on some, some foundation somewhere on some site. And of course, the first thing they do, these people, is blame the detectorist. That hole, I can guarantee, was never dug by a detectorist eh, at night. Eh, it was too neat. And it was one hole, very neatly formed. Why would it be? If there was somebody going on there, night orking at night, an undesirable, not a detectorist, by the way, because night orkers aren't detectorists, remember. They're two separate entities. You've got night orcas here, which are thieves and criminals, and you've got detectorists here, like us lot, that do the right thing. Hobby, enjoyment, fresh air, leave us alone. Right? Well, they blame this night, these night orcas for doing this one solitary hole on, a, on an archaeological site, and then they plaster it all over Facebook and social media, blaming the poor detectorist. I don't tolerate it. I banned him off the group, took his post down, and I'll continue to do that. And the reason is, our hobby again, like I said on previous films, months back, is under attack by these idiots. I think there's a growing number of these archaeologist type individuals that come out of college or university. And the first thing they do, they start ta attacking detectorists. You've got to remember this. The vast majority of metal detectorists do it for these three reasons. They do it because they love the hobby. They love finding things. They love uncovering history where the archaeologists wouldn't probably do it. They wouldn't have the time or the energy to do it, to walk up and down ploughed arable fields all day long, saving coins and artefacts from, from destruction, from farming machinery. They wouldn't do it. They would not do it. They haven't got the energy. They wouldn't have the know-how to do it. Right? 
We do it because we love it. We're passionate about doing it. That's why I do it and I've done it for 30 odd years. So that's one reason why we do it. The second reason why we do it is because we're, we're hobbyists. We love the outdoors. We love hobbies. We love getting out there, having an adventure, not harming anybody. Right? So we're getting healthy off the back of it. The fresh air is fantastic. Being outdoors is fantastic. And it's just a great... And, and of course, the other side of it is the social side of it. We love getting out with our friends and having a bit of a crack and having a bit of banter, going out finding... It's that sort of thing. So these people that continuously attack the detectorists need to be looking elsewhere, I'm afraid. Because the vast majority of detectorists that I know and that are out there are just doing it because they love them things that I've just mentioned. They love the outdoors, they love the history, they love the hobby side of things. Leave them alone. Stop attacking them. And I'm seeing this time and time again. I'm even seeing it crop up on Twitter. And I'm not a big Twitter user, social media wise, but I have a browse through it every now and then. And I can see these amateur archetypes attacking detectorists that haven't got the evidence behind it. I mean, there's things like stolen coins that come up on social media from time to time. There's been a, um, a raid somewhere in the UK where they've recovered Viking and Saxon coins. And the first thing they do is point the finger at the detectorists that they've been found illegally by them. There's no evidence of that. So what I'm going to say is I'll continue to fight for the good name of the detectorist and fight against these idiots that come out and the first thing they do is start calling and wanting detecting banned. It's ridiculous. Come to me. Come and have the debate with me direct. I'll so I mean, there's a lot of people out there. I was going to say I'll sort you out and I would sort you out big time because you've got to remember you're pointing the finger at the wrong people. Go and point the finger at the criminals. Do your own investigation at these criminals. But remember, these night orcas and other rum types, you've got to be careful what you say because I'll get myself in hot water, uh, which won't be the first time. You've got to remember the two separate entities. We are not criminals. We are just out to enjoy the hobby of detecting. We can't wait for harvest. We can't wait for August and September to arrive when all the crops are coming out. We'll get on them fields, tirelessly working for hours on end just to uncover a bent, mangled, hammered penny. That's probably worth 80 pence. We do it because of the history, folks. And we record and we work alongside the fines layers and officers where needed. And we record the fines to the Fitzwilly Museum if they're in that category. And we do all the right things, yet we continue to get the finger pointed at us, and I think it's wrong. So, where you guys come into it, this is why I'm going to give you this feedback now, is where you see on social media, call them out. Don't sit back and read it and feel frustrated. Put a comment on, blast them. They're cropping up more and more on social media links, especially Facebook, which Facebook can be a dangerous, dangerous place at times. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube. I've not checked. It probably is. But the detectorists are continuously battered by these amateurs. And I call them amateur archaeologists. I don't know any different. First thing they do is start calling the detectorists. That hole could have been done by anybody. And of course, if you remember back, and I've got the sheets in front of me still, where the cricket pitch was damaged by hundreds of holes, all neatly um, dug. Blame the detectorists. Nothing to do with a detectorist. It was too neat, too many of them. It was somebody who had a spat against the cricket club and decided to damage their, their prized pitch. The detectorist wouldn't scale an eight-foot fence with a detector at night to do that. What was he going to find? What was he going to achieve off the back of it? Ridiculous. So where you guys see these attacks on detectorists, call them out. Stick up for the hobby. You lot are ambassadors for the hobby. We're all ambassadors for the hobby. We should all be putting our opinions across where needed where it's warranted to fight against these idiots that continues, continuously point the finger at us for doing wrong. I watched people on Sunday at that rally, right? God bless them. There were some people there, detectorists, elderly gentlemen with the wives, detecting away, just enjoying being outside, just enjoying the hobby, just on the off chance that they might uncover something special, a nice coin, a nice artifact. They'll love it. And yet there's people out there that point the finger against us for what we do. It's absolutely ridiculous. This world is becoming scrambled by the minute. Uh, say no more than that. So we're all ambassadors, like I said. 
you know, we all should be sticking together. Where you see individuals doing our hobby damage, call them out. That's all I'm going to say on the matter. It's absolutely ridiculous how many people are out there having pot shots at the detectorist. So I know it's a bit of a rant, but if what the feedback I would like today, if I can, off you guys is, have any of you come across this? And how do you combat it? And how do you, as an individual, respond to this sort of action and this sort of behaviour? It would be fantastic to know. Now, the other thing is, there's probably detectorists watching this, right? that work alongside archaeologists, and I've met archaeologists in the past, right, which are different to the amateur types, they were fantastic people, love detectorists, quite a few of them, love them. Without us doing invaluable work out there in the fields, they'd be lost. Um, and they'd be, they'd be less knowledgeable about the stuff that we find, and that they learn off the back of it, if that makes sense and the documentation and everything else and the digs and everything else that we do if it wasn't for the good old detectorist we'd be back in the dark ages so it'd be good to hear from you so i know some of you guys do work with them i've met them before as i've said and they've been always very very pleasant and decent people um, and never be afraid to tell them that you're a detectorist why don't ever be embarrassed about telling people that you're a detectorist especially archaeologists if they want to come back with some sort of response to that then you make sure you're armed and ready for a response because we do nothing wrong we're just innocent individuals that love the hobby right that's my rant over right so the next detecting talk film will be this friday and it'll be all be, all be about um fines and the x factor in detecting now we've done something like this similar before way back 12 months ago uh, we've got a whole host of new subscribers to this channel now that watch so it will be interesting to see how that one plays out. If you're out detecting this week, which I'm sure some of you may be, but the crops are so far not coming off yet. It's, it's what, nearly mid-June. So I've still got another five weeks to wait until our crops are lifted off the pea fields in certain parts of the country. So we've still got a bit of time to wait. Uh, but I do hear that the crops are turning brown in certain counties, Yorkshire, Lincolnshire, Norfolk, that place, the east coast downwards. The crops are turning because we've had a lot of sunshine, but in between that we've had a lot of rain. Um, so it could be a bumper harvest this year for the farmers and it could be a bumper year for the detectorists to get out on these fields early when the crops are lifted. So keep an eye, keep your eyes peeled on that one, folks. If you are, like I said, if you're out and about this weekend, good luck. If you're de de out detecting, just to know, make a note for you guys that are our customers, unearthed customers, we are planning an organised dig in the next few weeks in Cumbria. So this is for customers only, people that buy the machines and accessories off me. Uh, and it's my way of saying thank you to you for doing that. Um, we put these digs on for that reason and that reason only. They're not open digs where thousands of people come. They're between 30 and 40 people at a time. And we've had some fantastic finds over the last 18 months, two years. So long may that continue. So watch this space. There'll be details on that on the organized dig group coming up soon on Facebook. If um, you want any more details, drop me a message or contact me on um, the phone if, if you want, or you can even drop me a message on Facebook, Messenger, email, whatever you like, and I can give you more details. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye for now.